Hello, Sim Racers, and welcome to Friday live stream. Tonight, special live stream. Uh, we're gonna talk about the beloved subject of uh, probably all Sim Racers out there. So we're gonna talk about force feedback, and um, it's not gonna be. I know that probably, probably most of you uh, wait for uh, uh, you know me to give you some. Uh, numbers and some values to use and magically get the best force feedback but you know me by now it's gonna be a little bit different um, there's gonna be some run there's gonna be some bad words uh, probably I'm gonna put the whole sim racing community in a little bit of flame maybe uh, but I think it's for the best <laughs> and may the first be with all of us yeah how to force feedback? How to force feedback? So I have prepared uh, a little bit of slides in somewhat a presentation-like stuff to help point uh, the um, you know to, to help uh, understand some of the concepts because in my opinion what I'm about to tell you tonight is about the concept of force feedback and how we understand it. And then maybe give you some advice on how you could at least be certain that what you feel is what you should be, you know, feeling from the first feedback, so you don't have any errors on your drivers or whatever. And uh, after you have this ready, then I'm going to give you a couple of hints of uh, and tips of how you could uh, play around with values or whatever and feel different things. Where are we? Here we are, I believe. We're gonna talk about force feedback, what is the perfect force feedback, clipping, dumping, magic words, whatever, okay? Right, number one, the perfect force feedback doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. This is a chimera, this is a utopian, Sub subject, something that everybody, everybody tries to achieve. But please let me know in the chat what is the perfect force feedback for you. Before you do that, let's let's go farther forwards and explain why the perfect force feedback doesn't exist. So, Okay, so I've made a, a small diagram, even in three dimensions, okay? And it's a very simple diagram which says, you know, you can have a first feedback that is less or more communicative, okay? You can have a first feedback that is less or more realistic, whatever that means, okay? And you can have a first feedback that you get information about the front of the car and the rear of the car, whatever that means, okay? And I've just placed... A couple of our, you know, beloved uh, simulators, okay, in the diagram. Uh, I've just placed them around. I'm not even. I mean, you can you can change everything as you like. It doesn't matter, okay. You can change everything. You can put irising more or less, but pretty much close into into the same position, okay. So whatever you think for any of the simulators doesn't matter because everywhere in the community okay even on the sim racers that are in love with their you know beloved and uh, preferred sim they still try and search to improve the first feedback and you can see that you can ask any sim racer and you will see that everybody is trying to use the settings of another guy and use the settings of another website and uh, change the steering wheel with another steering wheel and so on and so forth. So everybody tries to obtain the perfect first feedback. And so my question is, what is for you? Can you show me where the perfect first feedback is? So is it there? Is it, is it over there for you? Okay. Or is it maybe over here, over down here for you. So more realistic, but more feeling of the rear wheel source feedback. 
Or is it over there? More, less realistic, but more communicative. Because we have people that say, no, the first feedback has to be more communicative some way because I lack the G-forces of the real car, whatever. So where is the perfect first feedback? Does it exist? It doesn't. It doesn't. For each one of us, it's different. And why is different? Why is that? Why uh, the perfect preference for each one of us is different? Well, here's why. So, so the first feedback is a language. And let me explain you what, what I mean by that. Now, in reality, which we know reality is perfect, right? Because actually reality is not perfect. It's inevitable. Reality is what it happens. You cannot change it. If you are in your, in your own car, the feedback that you get from your own car, this is it. There's no sliders to play around. There is nothing for you to say, oh, this is not properly simulated. That's it, right? What you get, that's it. Because in reality, you get some feedback from the sasis and the steering wheel. Okay, so the steering wheel gives you some feedback. The sasis vibrates, gives you some feedback. You get some feedback from the visual, from your eyes. So you see what is going on around you, and this gives some feedback to your brain. And then you get some feedback from, from the sounds. Okay, So you listen to the tires creaking, uh, you listen to the car vibrations, you listen to the sound of the road, to the engine, whatever. And this, again, gives some feedback to your brain. And obviously, <laughs> you feel on your butt or on your body, uh, you feel the G-forces and the vibrations, and those also gives a feedback to your brain, right? All of that is something that you need to learn and your brain needs to learn how to react into all this feedback coming from all your sensors so that it can react. So you get all those things, your brain works it out and gives you know some uh, reactions to your muscles so that you can try to keep control of the car. Which means that your brain needs to understand all of those inputs and talk back and react from all those, those inputs. That is why the first feedback is a language. You need to understand what the input's telling to you. You learn how to react, and then you react. And the more you practice and the more you learn, because the feedback is always the same in reality, right? the more you get better and the more your reactions are, you know, proper. Okay. So this is what happened. This is why the first feedback is a language. It's a language between your brain and all your sensors. Now, there are different first feedback approaches in the simulation. Okay. The first approach is to make everybody happy. So practically, the developer says, OK, I don't care. You want to have the best feedback in the world, make it your own. So they give you all the sliders you can have. So you get sliders for the power of the feedback, the force, dampening, rod effects, the weight of the front wheels, the weight and the influence of the rear wheels grip into the first feedback. There are, there are seems that they are they're having available that. There are some other sims, you know, they even put different numbers like flavor and uh, I don't know, astrology, where the planets stay and the Nostradamus and the stones always go up and the crypto is everywhere. So you do it. Here are the sliders. Have fun. What is the result of that? Right. The result of that is that everybody starts moving around the sliders. You know, the more you move around the sliders, the different uh, idioms and dialects of first feedback you have. So everybody is learning a different language, and everybody is trying to see if the language of the other person is better than his own one. 
And so they start asking around, give me your values and let me try this and this is better. No, this is... And this is exactly what is happening also with the setups, you know. You constantly ask setups from other drivers with the hope to become a faster driver to have better performance. And sometimes it works for you and sometimes you get the setup of an alien which is like two seconds faster than you and you cannot even drive this setup, for example. Or the other way around. Because also the other way around, it happens as well, right? So you, you get uh, some aliens that simply cannot make setups and they drive whatever they have on hand and sometimes they can't even drive the, the proper setups or they manage to do lap times even though their setups is shit. It happens also as well. So, and because as we said, force feedback is a language. Everybody is trying to do whatever, you know, thinks it's, it's better. But as we said before, nobody can determine what is the best for feedback. There is no way to determine this. And you don't even do it in your real car. In your real car, I mean, if you have a Lotus, you have excellent first feedback. And then if you jump into a Porsche old style with the uh, servo uh, assisted uh, steering, you have excellent feedback from the uh, steering wheel. And then you jump into uh, the first uh, Porsche with the electro-assisted steering, and it's not so good. And so what do you think? That uh, the guys that bought the Porsches with the first electro-assisted steering are changing values to make it better? No. That's it. You cannot change it. You have to deal with it. So after a while, you learn to deal with the car, and everything is wonderful again because, you know, life is good. You're driving a Porsche, right? So this is the first approach. In Kunos, I'm not saying that this is a wrong approach. It has its own merits. Fine. In Kunos, we decided to not do this approach for very, very, very specific reasons. And this is our approach. Our approach is make everybody mad. But it is the objective approach. Okay. Uh, everybody gets mad because obviously you are forcing everybody to learn the same language. There are no sliders except of a couple of, of sliders. That's all. So there is no sliders there. So all you have to do is force yourself to learn the same language. And some people are happy with that because they can already understand the language. Okay. Some people are not so happy and they try to adapt themselves. And some people go absolutely mad and berserk and never accept it and change sim or start doing strange things with the with their configurations or whatever okay so why why we choose uh, this kind of approach because for us it's objective and that is very important for us because we do simulation and what does what does that mean it means that we calculate the tire forces in the physics those tire forces go into the suspension geometry and they get multiplied by the suspension leverage of the kinematics. So, you know, you have different suspension geometries, which means that a force generated at the tire goes through the whole suspension kinematics, and all those kinematics are levers, practically, and the levers create different forces, which end up to the steering column. Those forces are, there and are then sent to the steering wheel driver, and they are just multiplied by the force and the dampening. So if you want more force or less force, you just have a slider. And if you, if you want a little bit more damping or less damping, you have another slider. That's it. That's it. Now, as I said, what does that mean? This means that you cannot play with it, honestly. You have to learn the language. You have to get used to it. So it means that if you have done everything correctly in your driver settings and in the game, it should be the same for everybody. Okay. And why is this objective? Well, this is objective because we know that if someone has done everything correctly, at least in theory, and most of the time in practice, what I feel you should feel 
and what you should feel, your friends should feel the same, and what your friends should feel, it also the professional drivers should feel, and so on and so on. So everybody has the same experience. You might like it, you might love it, you might hate it, it doesn't matter, it is the same. Which means for us that we have no, um, how to say, representations, personal representations, uh, suggestive uh, impressions of whatever. Which means that if we find real drivers and you know race drivers or whatever, that they have sim racing experience and they are already used and can communicate properly because we also have to take into account this thing, it means that we can get their uh, input and feedback and understand do we have a problem with our physics? Because at that point, we have a problem with the physics, not with the force feedback simulation. There is no force feedback simulation. There is physics simulation, and the force feedback is generated by the physics. So we can understand, is there a problem with the physics? We have to work on the physics harder, better, find more solutions, find improvements to do, and that's what we do. If they are happy, and, they are, and, the, and the whole you know, reaction is very close to the real car, only in terms of steering, then we know that our physics work good enough. Never the same, because it's not reality, but good enough. And we try to find how we can improve it without uh, making uh, changes to, to the force feedback, right? So this is, this is how we do it, and this is why we, why we cho choose to do this kind of approach. And again, it doesn't matter if you feel better in another simulator or if your experience in reality is different and you think that the Sotokosa competition is not realistic. It doesn't matter for us. And I'll tell you why. We have people telling us, for example, that, oh, you know what, when I accelerate, the force feedback doesn't vibrate and doesn't go light. That gives me an indication that that person, for example, has only experience from front-wheel drive cars. That's it. In front-wheel drive cars, you put your foot down, the front wheel start to, to slip around, and when they slide, the front steering wheel becomes lighter and vibrates. So they have no experience from rear wheel drive. Or we have people telling me, oh, well, when I arrive at the peak of uh, you know, the, the grip uh, and I have understeer, the steering wheel doesn't become light. That gives me an indication that their experience is from professional go-karting, for example, which is something that you want to do. And you want to uh, make the steering wheel pretty light because it has to, the whole go-kart, in order to turn the go-kart, you have to raise the inner uh, rear wheel, which means that the front suspension geometry must be in a way that the whole go-kart and your weight, yourself, practically raises up when you steer so that you can raise the inner uh, uh, rear wheel. Uh, or we have people, you know, complaining for whatever reasons. And all those people complaining for one reason and the other reason at the same time. So you have at the same time people saying, oh, it doesn't become uh, lighter. And then you have another guy saying, oh, it becomes too light. So everybody has its own experience, its own beliefs, right? And expects from that maybe limited or not experience and belief to feel the same things here. While at the same time, you don't have the G-forces, for example, or all the vibrations that you have into a car and so on and so on. That means that, unfortunately, unfortunately, but it is the truth, your beliefs and opinion are not objective, are very limited, are you know limited to whatever you have experienced, maybe for your whole life, it doesn't matter. Maybe you are, uh, you know, uh, you could be even a professional race driver that has driven, and it has happened to me, for two decades, only front-wheel drive cars. It's not enough. It's not enough. So that is why you need to understand and you need to learn the language of your first feedback. Okay? All right. So 
How do we do that? How do, how do we do this thing? Well, first of all, we need to, um, we need to make sure that we don't have any wrong configurations in the driver of the steering wheel and inside the game. So let's go through five steps to ensure that we have everything properly set up. Okay. So first step, fix steering wheel angle. This is the first step we have to do. Fix steering wheel angle. What I mean by that? In Assetto Corso Competizione and Assetto Corso 1, and I think now pretty much in all uh, other simulators, if I'm not wrong, uh, I'm talking specifically PC version, okay? Unfortunately, unfortunately, parenthesis, for um, the old console version of Assetto Corso Competizione, you still have to find out the uh, degrees of rotation for every car and adjust your steering wheel. I hope they will fix it at some point. Uh, but let's focus first on um, on PC version. And in any case, what I'm, um, I'm about to tell you works for a any kind of scene, any kind of uh, PC version or uh, console version. Also on uh, uh, also of course on a set of console competition and a set of console one. So fix steering wheel angle. What I mean by that? So let's go in game for uh, for a moment. All right, let's go in-game. I won't even change setup. Green light. Go, go, go. The most important thing to do is make sure that, uh, and I hope that you can see also my steering wheel here, is that when you are rotating your steering wheel, your physical steering wheel in front of you, also the virtual steering wheel rotates at the same exact rate. and. As a matter of fact, if I put it at 90 degrees here, the virtual steering wheel has to be at 90 degrees. If it doesn't, that means that you have an error in your configuration. And how do you fix that? The easier fix is you go into the options controls and you set your steering wheel at 900, for example, here, like this, at 900. And also you set your driving uh, your steering wheel drivers at 900. Okay, this is our uh, configuration and advice on that. Some steering wheels, like for example, this one that I have here can go even higher. So I have set this at uh, 180 and also the steering wheel at 180. Okay, um, so you have to set your steering wheel to some, to some value high enough, high enough. Usually 900 is the highest you can set. And once you have done that, both in the steering wheel driver, so in the steering wheel driver, you will find a slider that you can set up exactly as you want, the degrees, and also same number in the options controls of the game. Okay. Then you go into the game and double verify that the movement of your physical steering wheel is exactly the same as the movement of the virtual steering wheel. This is very important. I have seen people, professional drivers, YouTubers, whatever, setting the physical steering wheel in less degrees because in their opinion, it makes the force feedback higher and it makes the steering wheel uh, more direct or whatever. What they are actually doing without knowing is simply going into the garage and setting the steer ratio at a lower number. It is the same thing. It is the same thing. Uh, Yonat says, uh, Yonat says uh, T300 goes up to, one, uh, to 1080 degrees. Should I set it like that in driver and game? You can. It's not necessary. It's not necessary. 900 works already. Why? Because the GT3 cars don't even arrive closely to 900. So 900 is the same. If you want to set it 1080, set it 1080, no problems. But again, I, I repeat, setting your steering wheel at a lower rate than the in-game option degrees is the same as going lower in the steering ratio. It's the same thing. 
they are just leaning into the placebo that, oh, it moves faster. It's the same thing, actually, okay? And you don't have, but if you had the, you know, the physics, uh, and you can do that into a set of course one, where you have the physics hard. In the physics hard, you can see the actual degrees of the, of the wheels, of the tires, and it is the same thing. So you steer the, the wheel at the same degrees, and you see the tires steering more or less, depending on the steer ratio that you are having. Andrea Iacchini, again, it doesn't matter if you set it at 900 or 1080, as you can also set it at 950 and 970, as what you have to do is set it the same degrees in the steering wheel driver and the same degrees into the game. That's the important thing. And to double verify that you have done it correctly, you go into the game, okay, you go into the game and you control that your steering inputs with your hands are the same, okay, as, uh, as the, the virtual. One on one, exactly, Briar. This is setting number one. Fix your steering wheel degrees, okay? Fix your steering wheel degrees. Let's go, let's move forward. So, number two. Check steering wheel driver sliders. Check steering wheel driver sliders. What I mean by this. So every steering wheel has its own driver uh, inputs and sliders. Okay. So driver sliders, for example, Logitech steering wheels have the, the new hub has practically only three sliders. So here you can set 900, as we said. Uh, check that the sensitivity is one on one, it's linear. To do so in the Logitech, you need to have it at 50. Very important thing, all, all steering wheels have the same thing. Centering spring strength. You have to disable this. Centering spring has to be zero. I've seen people use it, use it one, use it low, use it high. You have to put it at zero because if you don't put it to zero, it covers all the other effects from the physics more or less, but it covers the other effects of the physics. So the centering spring has to be zero. What is the centering spring? Centering spring is that I move my steering wheel into whatever angle, okay? I move my steering wheel into whatever angle like this, and when I leave it alone, it starts to rotate back alone to zero and stops there, okay? This is wrong. It shouldn't happen. You have to Put when the car is when the car is stopped. So the car is stopped, okay, uh, and you put your steering wheel into whatever angle, and the steering wheel should stay there with the car stopped. Okay, <laughs> if you're driving a Citroen DS, John Smith, you're my man. I love Citroens. It's another issue. If you're driving a Citroen SM, it's even a different issue. So. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's not talk about that right now. And if we do it, we will simulate it from the game. Okay, so let's not talk about that. So you put your steering wheel into whatever, um, whatever uh, uh, value, uh, sorry, um, rotation, please. And with the car stopped and the physics working, when you let it, it should stay there. If you see that your steering wheel rotates back and goes back to zero, then that means that you have um, you have center spring uh, enabled. In the Thrustmaster, it's auto center, it's called, and you have it enabled. Don't do that. Disable it, put it to zero. Disable center, screen, center spring and auto center settings and put it to zero. Into the Fanatec as well, there is a centering spring. I don't remember the name. Again, the centering spring is, at, is set to zero. This, is, this was the, our second verification. Uh, actually, let me go back to the sliders. So number two, steering wheel driver sliders. We haven't finished. Once you have done everything, okay, once you have done everything, Go into 
uh, if if your drivers permit it, go into your drivers and set the overall strength of all forces at 100%. All the all the forces at 100%. Okay, you want to have the driver giving all the power it can give to the steering wheel at least for the consumer um, for the consumer uh, steering wheels. For direct drives things start to be a little bit different. We will talk about them in a minute, but for the consumer will uh, want to have as high force as possible for the driver settings. Now, again, small parenthesis here. Once you have done all those things, you can still fine tune and move a little bit lower, higher, whatever. We are not talking about that right now. We are talking about verification, that your drivers and your steering wheel works properly and then and then you're gonna set it first you verify that all your settings are working properly so all your strength forces are going to be at 100 percent except the auto center and self-centering springs settings this has to be zero and disabled once you have your driving slider set up then it's time to go in game and start verifying the clipping. And so what is clipping? Okay, so let's see. So you go into your game, you go into your options, controls, and you put the gain, which is the, uh, the, the force, the multiplied force of, uh, of the physics into your steering wheel, okay? into your steering wheel, um, you put it to 100%. You put it to 100%. Um, owners of direct drive or very, very high-end uh, consumer wheels, watch out. It might be way too powerful for you. Uh, we are talking about consumer products that have lower force, okay? Lower force. So for you, maybe you want to start with a lower number. You guys that have direct drives and stuff like that, you want to start with a lower number. You know that already that your steering wheel is extremely powerful. So be careful. For the consumer guys, Logitech, Thrustmasters, normal up to a point uh, because higher Thrustmaster wheels have higher forces. Uh, maybe Fanatec of the you know belt uh, side, you can put it on 100 and do and try some some stuff, okay? Fernando, I just I just said uh, for Thrustmaster actually. So we go into gain one hundred, and what you want to do is get into your car, okay? And you want to drive with optimum grip, so you want to have as much grip as possible good conditions, all right? Uh, possibly high downforce, so maybe don't go at Monza, but go maybe you can go at Spa, for example. Okay, so we go in, you get your, your good setup or possibly the aggressive setup, and you go to drive. Now, while you're driving, watch your first feedback bar that you can see on the HUD uh, down uh, at, uh, at the right uh, part of the screen, on the bottom right of, of the screen, all right? Now, obviously, as you're driving around, you can see the force feedback bar gray obviously becoming higher, okay? And at some point, it's going to clip. And when it clips, it becomes red, like when I go over the curbs. So it clips a little bit and uh, it uh, it becomes red. Why you want to be on optimum grip, uh, high downforce, possibly in hot lap where you know you get the tires at perfect temperature and pressure when, while you cross uh, the start finish line? Because this is when you're gonna get the maximum forces from the steering, from, from the tires, from the physics. And maximum forces means maximum force feedback forces as well. 
And obviously, if you go on the Oruz, which is all this deep and uh, high, you're going to get as much force as possible from the tires. So you go in there. You see, it clips quite a bit. Okay. And it become red for the whole... Um, for the whole uh, duration of the Oruz. So, what we are trying to understand and what is clipping? What is clipping? Here's what's happening. As we said, the tires generate lateral forces, realign with forces, all that stuff. It gets, we get this from the, um, uh, sorry, from, uh, uh, from, the tires, we move that uh, into the leverage of the suspension geometry. Okay. And, um, and once we have made all the calculations, we get that final force and we send it to the driver. Okay, we send it to the driver. Now, obviously, uh, the simulation understands because the driver says, I can get first forces from 0 to 100%. Okay. Okay. Uh, I can get forces from 0 to 100%. So, if the forces arriving are more than 100%, the simulator understands this and knows that it clips. It means that I'm sending 110%, but I know that the driver will not make the difference. It will arrive at 10, at 100%, and then it will be flat. If you go up to 110, 120, it won't give you more, more force, the driver. It will flatten out everything at 100%. Okay? That's why it becomes red. It gives you an indication that the forces arriving to the driver are going over the maximum force that the driver is possible to give you, which means that you are going to lose some information. So you are you know, having some force driving, and you're getting still way to feel some force, some torque to your hand, say, I don't know, 5 Newton meters, and you are already at 100%. At some point, you, you hit the curb, whatever, and the force goes up to 100 and you know 10 percent, and you should get 5.5 newton meters. But the driver says I can't give that, and so you stay at five at five new, newton meters as before. So nothing has changed. This is what clipping means. That is what clipping means. It's an indication for you, the player, that the game is producing even more forces but your driver cannot reproduce them on your physical steering wheel. Okay? So every time, every time you clip, it means that you're losing some extra information. Exactly. So Dr. Respect already knows what, what follows. Okay, so how to deal with clipping and what are the advantages and disadvantages of dealing with clipping, okay? So to deal with clipping, you go back to your game, into your options, controls, and you start to lower the amount of forces that you send to your steering wheel drivers and steering wheel physical. Okay, So let's go down to something like 80%. Okay, So we go down to 80%. Now, what is going to happen? Well, obviously, you cannot lower just the high end of the forces. You're going to lower all the forces. So if you send 5 Newton meters, okay, if, you, if you're sending 10 Newton meters of force and you go down to 80%, you're going to get 80 Newton meters. But it's also true that if you are, you know, getting 1 Newton meter because you are just turning just a tiny little bit, then, by going down to 80%, you're also going to get 0 0.8 Newton meters. Okay, so you're going to lower by 20% everywhere into the whole force feedback, which means that, yes, 
you are going to eliminate the clipping and get some extra information when you are hitting some very wild curbs, but you're also going to get a much lighter steering wheel everywhere which in a direct drive is not a problem because in direct drive you have so much force that you can turn it up into the driver and be fine with it. But in a consumer wheel, an old Logitech or an old Thrustmaster, whatever, this starts to be a problem because there's not enough force on the steering wheel. So if you are even lowering it even more, the steering wheel is going to be you know, even smoother and smoother and smoother and less and less and less powerful, which you might like or might not like. Okay, so it is, there are advantages and disadvantages of this. So let's see what happens now. We went down by 80% and uh, let's restart and see what happens. So let's go back, same condition as before. Let's see if the first feedback again on the bottom right of the steering of the of the screen in uh, in the HUD come on Ferrari I know you have a long first gear but you can do it yes so let's go over there up on the curbs just a hint of clipping no clipping at all you see we went over the big curb on this side and no clipping at all so we eliminated clipping over there let's see at the ruse what happens No clipping here. No clipping here again. Let's go inside the rules and see. Before we had a lot of clipping, maybe now we're gonna have less clipping. Obviously, the steering wheel is lighter now. Yes, we have a little bit of clipping, not as much as before. Not as much as before, okay? So, again, as I said, everything, everything we do into a simulator and in real life as well is a compromise. Everything is a compromise. We now have less clipping, and we, that means we get a wider range of effects. But all the effects, all the effects are lower in force. So the force is lower, which means that sometimes you might not even feel them, because everything is has less difference between them. But the advantage is that when you hit very hard the uh, the curb you feel that spike better. Now, why I'm saying this is an advantage and there isn't something that I can tell you it's the perfect setting. Is it, and again, we are talking about consumer steering wheels, which their, you know, their force is limited. Is it important for you to feel the big spike of force when you are going over the biggest curb of the whole circuit, okay, and you can see the whole car and the whole cockpit moving up and down like crazy, and you can hear the suspension going bang, boom, bang, because, you know, a crash and everything and the vibrations of the cockpit and everything. Is it as important for you to understand that you are over that big curb because you feel that extra spike? Or maybe it doesn't really matter and you prefer feeling in more uh, force the subtle changes of the grip, but you are clipping because you're already very high on the, on the forces. You are clipping when you are going over that curb. What is more important for you? That's, that's the thing. You have a hardware that is limited. So you have to make a decision and a compromise. So what is more important for you? Is it important for you to feel that big spike on the curb or just feel a generic spike on the curb and then feel more a vibration or a, a, a bump on the road or the, um, the loss of grip and so on and so on? Is it important for you? This is your choice. I cannot give you a specific um, advice on that. Nobody else can give you a specific advice on that. It's your personal choice. So you have to understand that there is no perfect choice of that. You have a limited hardware 
and you need to make the best you, you can out of your hardware. So you have to decide what is more important for you. Is it important to fill a good range of forces into all the turns of SPA except Oruz? Or is it more important to fill the whole ranges of force inside the ruse and then feel less subtle effects into all the turns of spa? That's, that's your decision. So this is how clipping works and how you have to set it up for the consumer. Now, for the direct drive, it's much more easier. Any kind of direct drive or even some... Uh, steering wheels that they are not direct drive, but they have very, very strong uh, electric motors. Uh, so for the non-direct drive, my, uh, and I think everybody's, uh, so for direct drive, uh, my advice, and I think everybody's advice is, go low with the gain. Go to something like 50. Okay. Go to something like 50. Start from 50. And then from the steering wheel or for the driver of the steering wheel, it's the same. It's the same. Uh, start cranking up the power of your steering wheel up to the point that you like it. With a 50% gain into the game, I can assure you that it's going to be impossible, practically impossible, to clip the signal. So you're always going to have the full range of the signal, and then you, uh, you, know, you turn up, the power of the steering wheel, it, there is plenty of power and you get plenty of range without clipping. And it's not, that's, only, not, that's not the only reason as well, uh, but generally the more power you give from the drivers or from you know, the uh, knobs of, of the steering wheel, the more electricity you put into your uh, direct drive and the more electricity, the more power you put into your direct drive, the better it reacts, faster, Know, with more dynamic range, everything is, is better for that. So for such kind of, uh, uh, you know, of uh, steering wheels, go to the middle or even lower. Some, some people even use, you know, you have the direct drive too, and you can use easily, you know, 35 or 40% of gain. There is no way on earth that you're going to clip with such low gain, but you can have all the power you needed from the steering wheel because, you know, direct drive has... Plenty of power to give. Okay. Uh, Mid Augas says, it seems counterintuitive. If most of the weight is at the back, why would force feedback feel so strong going flat out? Uh, I think you have the things mixed up. What is force feedback giving you? It cannot. Force feedback comes from the front from front wheels. It cannot get anything from the rear wheels. It's not connected. All the force feedback is coming from the front wheels. Even when the car goes sideways, okay, the front suspension should be properly tuned to counter steer alone to follow the yaw momentum rotation of the car, of the body. So even if the rear wheel, the rear is sliding around, the wheel counter steers alone because the front wheels and the suspension is made in a way to catch the slide. So everything you feel and you should feel from the steering wheel comes always from the front wheels. The real wheels have nothing to do about it. Nothing. Nothing. If you think it like this, you'll see why it's not counterintuitive. Actually, your way of thinking was counter in this, uh, in this example. Uh, ah, poor oscillations. The Porsche oscillations is because the car wants to rotate. Do you remember the uh, hammer example? The, the car wants to rotate. So because the rear wants to rotate and overtake the front end, obviously it's going to oscillate and the front wheels trying to stay straight they, while the body rotates, obviously they oscillate. Which, bring us, which brings us to uh, the... Uh, where am I? Sorry. Which brings us to the fourth thing I want to talk about. I don't know if I can make it. Where am I? Here am I am. Yeah. Which is check dampening. All right. So uh, dampening. What is dampening? I've talked about that into version 1.8 update uh, live stream. But let's 
see this again, okay? So dampening means that if you set, as we said, uh, all the sliders, okay, also the damper, all the sliders into, and the damper slider as well, uh, into your driver at 100%. For the Logitech, for example, you don't have to do that uh, because it's already set up and it doesn't give you the driver. Uh, it doesn't give you the slider, but it, there, it is there already. So you set up, uh, you, you let alone the Logitech as it is, and in the Thrustmaster, you put the damper at 100%, okay? Once you have done this, you go in-game, and you set up your, uh, at least you leave your damper at 50%, okay? As it is normally. So you leave it over there at 50%, and then all you have to do is pick a normal car, not a car with lots of rear, uh, I mean, pick whatever car you want, but usually, at least for starters, uh, you pick um, uh, a normal car with normal weight distribution, maybe the Aston Martin or the new BMW, something like that, or uh, whatever. Uh, and you have to go into the straights. Now, first of all, normally, if everything is, uh, all the slider are set up correctly, then when you move around your steering wheel while stopped, you should feel a slight friction on your steering wheel, okay? But you should also feel a slight friction when you are moving on the straight. So you go to something like 150 kilometers per hour and you need to just move your steering wheel a little bit like this at constant speed. And it should oscillate a little bit and then go straight. And you should feel just a little bit of friction, okay? This is very important. Now, I've seen many people driving with the steering wheel that you just move it just a little bit like that. You just move it a little bit and then it starts oscillating like crazy and it spins the car around. Let's leave aside for a moment uh, some specific cars like the Honda NSX or the Porsche 911, which have a lot of, they, they want to rotate a lot. So that might conf uh, you know, uh, confuse you. So you might not want to deal with those cars immediately. So go into the Aston Martin, for example, or into the Ferrari, or into the Bentley, you know, normal cars in terms of weight distribution, and try that. So it's even easier if you go to Monza, which has the long straights. straights. So you go up to something like 150 kilometers per hour. You just do that, and the car should go straight, like this. So if you use the default uh, values from a Seto Corso Competizione, it should work like that, okay? If your sliders are not set up correctly, so for example, you might have the sliders of the damper down to zero, or you might have a profile that doesn't point exactly to a Seto Corsa executive, executable uh, file, so it messes up and your damper is zero, then you're gonna have a situation like this. So let's find here the damper and switch it off, okay, like that. So now I don't have any damper from, from the driver, the physical driver of the physical steering wheel. So go to 150, look at this. I didn't want to touch it because, you know, the, the direct drive is really bad. So all I need to do is just touch it and it started going left and right like crazy. Like crazy, right? So, see again on inside the screen. I want, no, I, this time I was a professional driver. I wanted to show you the steering wheel. I wanted to show you the, the physical steering wheel, how it turned around and look at it how fast it moves. It really rotates. Let me go back here. Look at this. It rotates like that. It has no friction at all. No friction at all. So let's go back in -game now and show you also in-game how it reacts. Okay. And this time, 
yeah, for, for once, I, I wanted to do that. <laughs> so, again, into the game. Look at this. This is crazy. Whoa. It has no friction at all. Which means that when you are, you know, steering and maybe the rear end comes around, it's very easy for you to counter, counter steer. Because there's no friction. It's very easy for you to move around. But it's also not stable. It doesn't give you stability. Look at that. I mean, can you see the steering wheel? Let me show you. Like this. Look at the virtual steering wheel, all right? Even though the car is damaged. I mean, look at this. What is this? And many, many people are driving like that. And they don't feel the stability of the car and they complain that the car turns around and it is unstable and it oscillates a lot and so on and so on. So what you need to do is you need to put up the damper of your driving slider and put also up the damper inside the options, okay? So let's go back again and start. So I've put it now into the steering wheel at 100. And you can also exaggerate the situation in order to understand that, you know, now you feel, you see, it really is very dampened right now. You can really feel the difference. It's so dampened that it actually doesn't even go back to the, to the straight as fast as before. So if you exaggerate that, it means that if you need to, you know, counter steer, then you want to you're going to have you know problems it's way too much friction okay so you need to find out the compromise between free movement so that you can steer around okay but also stability let's go up to 100 even 200 kilometers look at this this is stability you see you see look at how the steering wheel is just stays straight so again this is a compromise but i can assure you that if you try it and put the damper slider at 100 and play a little bit also with the damper inside the options here this one damper this one damper you will start to feel a much much more stable car which also brings us to the uh, fact that the setup, the car behavior, the handling, it's all in our minds. It's not something that it is, you know, I get the setup from another guy that is faster. Yes, might be, might not. But just changing the settings of the steering wheel, it will make you feel the car different, more stable or less stable in the term. So because you need the feedback to understand what is going on. Right? Okay. So this is this is how it works mainly. So you have set up your sliders. You have set up the clipping and you have set up the dampening and you are sure by the verifications that we did and you need to do the verifications that everything works correctly. Right? Everything works correctly. What is the next step? Okay, so what is the next step that you need to do? And this is the final step. Then the, tweak it, the tweaks start. So the next step here is set and forget. This is the next step. And it is extremely important. Set and forget. What I mean by this? You have verified that the steering wheel does all the things that we said it should do. One, the steering angle is correct. Two, the clipping is correct, more or less, and you feel everything you need. Three, the dampening is correct. One, two, three. Okay, one, two, three. All those things are set up. What should you do? But I don't feel the car correctly. I don't like the car. I don't feel... Set and forget. Drive the damn thing. Drive the fucking thing for at least two weeks or three, depending on 
whatever are your, your muscle memory and practice sessions. Uh, it depends if you can drive every day or if you drive once a week or whatever. I don't know. But drive the dumb thing and don't change anything. Do not change it. Why? Because you need to build the muscle memory. And muscle memory means that your brain starts to understand the feedback it gets from the will through your hands and reacts by giving to your hands the correct inputs to control the car. The first day it's going to be may, might be terrible or so so whatever. The second day might be a little bit better. The third day it's going to be okay. The first day it's going to be fantastic. You need to build muscle memory. You need to try things. You need to drive. You need to try different things in driving, but not change values. If you keep on changing values, trying to find out the perfect setup, the perfect setup because you are not able to control the car, because other people are faster than you, because whatever, you are going to fail miserably. Trust me, it's almost actually, yes, it's more than two decades of active online sim racing career. <laughs> okay, two decades. And the only problem between for, 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 for the performance, for the drive, it's the only problem is between the steering wheel and the driving seat. It's this guy here. That's the problem. This guy here, your brain is the problem. Let your brain understand the language. How do you learn a new language? You go to possibly to the uh, country and you go full immersion and you learn the language properly. And yet, how, how do you do with your real car? Do you like the string on your real car? Well, maybe initially not that much, but then you get used to it. Amazing concept. You get used to it. And then it's perfect. You cannot change it in real life. That's it. What do you want to do? That's it. How do you change things into the simulator? Oh, but of course, I will change all the sliders I can see everywhere. Change the sliders every day, every hour, every time. Ask the sliders from my friend. Ask the sliders from my community. Ask any kind of setup and force feedback setup and sliders I can get and change it every week until I get the perfect configuration, which I cannot even define. Again, make an honest question to yourself. Can you define what the perfect force feedback is for you? You cannot. It does not exist. What is the perfect for feedback? You cannot. All right? So set and forget for at least two weeks. Drive the damn thing. Let your brain understand. Once your brain has understood, okay, and you get some muscle memory and you can control the car, okay, especially if you can do consistent lap times, okay, especially if you can do consistent lap times, then you can fine tune. Fine tune doesn't mean you change everything and restart because your brain is going to be, I mean, it's like if I start talking to you right now in Italian, some of you might understand me. If I start talking in Greek, a couple of you might understand me. And I will still be telling you the same things, but you cannot understand. This is the exact th same thing that happens to your brain every time you change all the parameters trying to find out the perfect something, which this doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. So it's a mentality thing. Okay. Now, you might say, well, I tried it. I don't like it. Now I understand the car because I can assure you you're going to understand the car, but I don't like it. That's perfectly fine. That is the indication for you to say, you know what? I tried it for two or three weeks. I understand what the car does. I can do consistent lap times. I just don't like it. I hate it. Fine. My friend, change simulator, go somewhere else, change car, whatever. 
and my congrats to you because you have an opinion and you have a personal preferences and it is fine. It's perfectly acceptable. It's wonderful. This is fine. But don't change values to whatever seem you like every day, every week, trying to find something that doesn't exist even in your head. Okay? So, okay, so you have done everything. You like the car. You like the, uh, the performance. You, you like the configuration. Everything works pretty good. Okay? And you're like, I would like to fine-tune. What we mean by fine-tune? Fine-tune means um, changing a tiny little bit of specific things at a time. Not everything, but changing just a tiny little bit things at a time. So, for example, I'll give you a, a very exaggerated example to make you understand what, uh, what I mean. Uh, so let's have a go. So let's let's take the Ferrari, which is has a specific suspension geometry that helps what we're going to show. So many people say, you know what? Uh, yeah, everything is good. I like it. Okay, but I would like that when I steer and I arrive at the limit of of the front end grip, then the steering wheel goes, uh, you know, uh, very soft, and that gives me an indication that I am over the limit of the front end grip, because for whatever reason, with my eyes, I cannot predict that the car goes wide. I need some force feedback. That's fine. Uh, it's all on the physics, on the suspension geometry. So you go into the setup, go here, and I am exaggerating right now. Let's get the caster down to five. Very, very low number for a rear uh, wheel drive car, especially one that has less weight at the front. So now let's go again and driving the Ferrari. You will instantly notice that there is much less, um, let's go in, much less steering force. And you can also see it from the first feedback bar at the bottom right uh, of the screen. Now when I will go into the turn and to this, you can see that I got disqualified again. Uh, so you can see that instantly the steering wheel became uh, practically very, very light. And at some point it even wanted to steer more by itself. Instead of having opposite force and counter steering, the steering wheel became so light that it wanted to steer all by itself and go to lock. Okay, let's stay into here. You see, it wants to, to go like that. Now, obviously, you cannot feel it, but it does exactly this. Okay? So, when you go to the peak of the, of the grip, at that point, you go a little bit more and you feel the total loss of force feedback almost, and actually the steering wheel wants to rotate even more. Let's do it here. Let's go into... You see, it just wants to... You see that it wanted to, to rotate. Now, it, it wasn't into... You have to go into understeer, right? So let's try this here at the Curva Grande. Let's see if we can update it. Ah, we cannot do it. It's still too... Let's try here. You see? It just turns around completely. It doesn't want to counter steer. So this is a very exaggerated uh, effect that you can achieve with very low caster. Now you might say, well, I like the um, I like the effect, but unfortunately the steering has become so light that I don't enjoy it anymore, and my gain is at one hundred percent. My um, my uh, slider is at one hundred percent. What can I do? Okay, I just don't like it. Well, we still have uh, a solution for you. And it's also a very nice solution because if you go to your numerical keypad in your in your keyboard, you can press uh, keys eight and two, 
and you can see here user for feedback set to 1.8, 10, 11, and so on. This raises even more the gain for this specific car, for this specific car. And the next, it also saves it. So the next time you go in there, it also, uh, it, will, it will keep your specific value for this car, okay? So I can raise it up quite a bit here, okay, up to 1.5, which is maximum. And now I still have power. And you can see also the first feedback that it moves around more. And I also still have the effect of when I'm going up to, to the limit, then it just wants to rotate along, okay, into the inside of, of uh, the tire. So there are things you can do like that. Again, I remind you, number eight and number two, user for feedback set for specific car. And it keeps memory of every set ad, uh, setting you did for this specific car. Of course, it works also in the opposite way. So some people say, well, yes, the Ferrari has very nice handling, but I don't like it because the steering wheel becomes very light when I go over the limit. I would like the steering wheel to be more, you know, uh, strong always. Well, just pull up the caster into, uh, now I will exaggerate it into something very high. I will exaggerate it, just go maximum. Drive it again, and now you will see that the steering wheel, even if I go into full understeer, it will not want to rotate alone. It will want to counter steer like this. So now I'm going like that, you want like this, full, and it wants to go back. You see? It wants to go back like that. It counter steers alone. And if you say, well, yes, I did that, but now the force feedback is way too high because look at that, it clips right away, no problem. Numerical keypad, key two, and I'm going down to zero point something, <laughs> whatever. It goes really low. And now I have no clipping at all, but still the behavior is the same. You see, it wants to counter steer even at complete understeer situations. So there you have it. This is fine tuning. It also, obviously, you will say, but that is changing the caster also changing changes the setup of the car. I know, I know. But sometimes I'm not telling you to do such exaggerated changes, but you can play with the caster, still maintain your setup handling characteristics and change also the steering wheel characteristics, feedback characteristics as well. So this is fine tuning. Other fine tunings you can do. Let's go to the options this time. You can still play a little bit with the gain. We can still play a little bit with the, with the damper. Okay. For some wheels, you have the minimum force. What does that mean? Some wheels, like, for example, the, the best example is the old Logitech wheels, G27, G29. Uh, they have a lot of uh, dead zone around the center. Not steering dead zone doesn't mean that if you steer it one degree nothing happens to the wheels so the wheels still work around okay so the, the wheels still turn but you have dead zone of the first feedback so you steer it at like one degree left or right and the the steer has no horse feedback is completely zero okay it's completely zero um to, you know, to fix this problem of the mechanical uh, problem of, of the steering wheel, you can raise the minimum force. And in the Logitech wheel, uh, you can go up to 12%, even 15% on some occasion. And that means that it brings the uh, force feedback reactions much closer to zero. So even with a lo old logitech wheel, you just move the wheel around a little bit and you instantly gain some force feedback uh, right from, from the zero. Uh, for some older Thrustmaster, the, the same thing is somewhere around 4 6%, something like that. Uh, don't overdo it because if you overdo it, then you're going to get a step on the force feedback, which means that as soon as you go over the zero degrees, 
instead of having a small increase in force feedback, you're going to have a big increase. And that means your steering wheel will oscillate like crazy around the center like that. And you don't want that, obviously. So, yeah. So this is it. This is mainly, this is mainly how to force feedback. So again, I remind you guys, for perfect force feedback doesn't exist. Nobody can say with certainty, with certainty what are the characteristics of the perfect force feedback. It doesn't exist. Okay? So what you really want to do is learn the um, is learn the language or between the force feedback and your brain. And to do so, first of all, you need to take care and verify that your steering wheel works properly. Okay, so go back to all the verifications we talked about that, right? And once you have done that, set it, make sure that everything works properly so that you have the same configuration like everybody else. Again, guys, this is a mentality problem of all gamers. Someone has a problem, the first thing that goes through their mind is, oh, that's a bug of the game. It might happen. But before, before thinking about that, go around and see. Do you see hundreds of thousands of people complaining about that bug? Or do you see a couple of people, 10 people, even if they are three of, the, of your friends having the same bug? If you see only three of your friends and... 10 or 20 people shouting about in the forums, then almost, you know, almost always, 90% of the, of the cases, the problem is in your configuration. So first try to solve out the problem in your configuration. Because if hundreds of thousands, in some occasions, millions of users do not cry out that there is a big issue with the game, and you, it, it happens only into 10 people, 20 people, 100 people, then that's an indication that it's not a bug of the software, but it is a problem of your configuration. I had one guy you know, telling me, I don't have the perfect graphics, and uh, hopefully this guy was not saying that it was a bug of, of, the, of the game, because it could see that everybody else was not having issues with the graphics. And we found out that uh, it was actually an issue of the drivers of the of the graphics card, uh, and you need to to you know to fix it. So don't instead of starting, oh that's a bug in the game. First, make sure and verify that your configuration is correct and works at the same way as almost everybody else. Okay. Once you are certain about that and you have fixed all the configuration, then, then stick to it. Make your brain understand the language after two weeks, three weeks, and then fine tune. Fine, underlining fine tune. This is how you FFB.